grave of the Paisley poet Robert Tannehill in the grounds of Canal Street Church, in a serious state of neglect, littered with withered branches and decayed leaves, completely overgrown with weeds, almost unknown to the people of Paisley, until the first and second year pupils of nearby Castlehead High School embarked on a project for European architectural heritage here. first stage of the project involved the efforts of these boys in the demanding task of a complete clearance of the grave and its surroundings. This part engaged the pupils in a number of tidying up jobs. The boys enjoyed this side of the work and entered into it with great gusto. Later they were joined by the girls in planting flowers and trees round the grave. Notice boards directing the public to the spot were made and painted by the pupils themselves and were erected at both entrances to the churchyard. In the future, the pupils of Castlehead High intend to maintain their interest in the grave. Tannehill is famed for his nature poetry. Ye dark waving plantings, ye green shady bowers, your charms ever varying, I view. My soul's dearest transports, my happiest hours, have owed half their pleasures to you. He wrote about the places and things he knew well. Now winter with his cloudy brow is far ayont yon mountains, and spring beholds her azure sky reflected in the fountains. Now on the budding slaythorn bank, she spreads her early blossom and woos the merrily breasted birds to nestle in her bosom. Although Tannehill came from a family of six brothers and one sister, once his father died, he alone remained at home with his mother. Tannehill was a very devoted son. He even wrote a poem about his duties towards his widowed mother. Tannehill plied his trade as a skilled weaver in the family cottage in Queen Street. But even when at work, Robert's mind seldom wandered from his writing. The wildflowers of summer or spread a say bonny, the mavis sang sweet frae the green birken tree. He 
yon cold sleety cloud scuffs along the bleak mountain and shakes the dark firs and the steer rocky bray. Throughout his life, Tannehill was troubled by a weakness in one of his legs. It was this slight limp that prevented him from accompanying his sweetheart, Jenny Tennant, to a local dance. Jenny spent the whole evening in the company of another young weaver. Later, Jenny and this weaver were to marry. In addition to this heartbreak, Tannehill was to receive further personal disappointment over the proposed second edition of his poems, which he sent to the Edinburgh publisher, Archibald Constable. On the 16th May, 1810, Tannehill, on returning from an outing to Glasgow, went to bed suffering from a fever, but it was more than mere physical illness that troubled the poet. With great concern, his mother and nephew tended him well into the night. Later, when it was discovered that in his sickness he had left the cottage, Peter Burnett, an American Negro who lived and worked with the family, went to search for him in the direction of Brediland.
on Yon Burnside by Robert Tannehill. Well meet aside the dusky glen on Yon Burnside, where the bushes from a cozy den on Yon Burnside, though the broomy nows be green and there be may be seen, yet will meet, will meet at in done by Yon Burnside. I'll lead you to the Birkin Boer on Yon Burnside. Say sweetly wove the woodbine flower on Yon Burnside. There the mavis we will hear and the blackbird singing clear as on my army lean down by Yon Burnside. Awaji root unfeeling true, free Yon Burnside. Those fairy scenes are no for you by Yon Burnside. Their fancy smooths the theme by the sweetly murmuring stream, and the rock lodged echoes skim, doon by yon burn side. Now the planting taps are tinged with gout on yon burn side, and gloaming draws her foggy shroud over yon burn side. Far free the noisy scene, I'll throw the fields a lane. There we'll meet my ain dear Jean, doon by yon burn side. Hey Donald, hi Donald. Though summer smiles on bank and brae, and nature bids the heart be gay, yet all the joys of flurry me, the pleasures near can move me. Hey Donald, how Donald? Think upon your vow, Donald. Mind the heathery now, Donald, where you vowed to love me. The button rose and scent in prayer. The silver fountain skinkling clear, the merry lavalock whistling near, with pleasure near can move me. Hey Donald, how Donald, think upon your vow, Donald. Mind the heathery now, Donald, where you vowed to love me. I didn't look on bank or bray, I didn't greet for our gay, but oh, my heart will break away way, gin Donald cease to loo me. Hey Donald, how Donald, think upon your vow Donald, find the head of it now Donald, where you vow to loo me. Lovely. and rainy as the nicht, no a star and no the carry, 
Lightnings gleam athwart the lift, and winds drive with winter's fury. Oh, are you sleeping, Maggie? Oh, are you sleeping, Maggie? Let me in, for loud the lin is roaring o'er the warlock craggy. Fear forsooth the beer true bank. The rifted wood roars wild and dreary. Loud the iron yet does clank, and cry o' hootlets makes me eerie. Oh, are you slipping, Maggie? Oh, are you slipping, Maggie? Let me in, for loud the lin is roaring o'er the warlock craggy. I boon my breath, I dar my speak, for fear arouse your walk, reef daddy. Calls the blast upon my cheek. Oh, rise, rise, my bonnie lady. Oh, are you sleeping, Maggie? Oh, are you sleeping, Maggie? Let me in, for loud the lin is roaring o'er the warlock craggy. The door, she let me in. He cast aside his dreeping pleady. Blow your waist, you rain and wind, since Maggie knew I'm in beside you. Now since you're walking, Maggie, now since you're walking, Maggie, what care I for hootless cry, for boor tree bank or warlock craggy? <laughs> <laughs> 